Hey everyone, before we begin on the stories, I wanted to give a trigger warning. Story number three contains sexual assault, so if that's something you want to avoid, now you know. And as always, if you have a story that you want to submit with a chance of it being narrated here on the channel, you can send your stories to southerncannibal.com. Also, there's going to be a small sponsor segment somewhere in the middle of this video. I know a lot of people get annoyed by that, but try and understand that this is what I do for a living, and the sponsors really help the channel out. Anyways, all that being said, let's begin on the stories. I'm an 18 year old girl for anonymity sake. I'm not going to disclose my name or where I'm from, but I'm going to describe myself and my ex-boyfriend a bit and he's a 23-year-old, six-foot indigenous man. We met on the dating app Tinder around the summer of 2021, and we didn't really talk much until September. We both expressed a bit of interest in each other, and he seemed pretty normal at the time. No red flags and such. We went on a date sometime in September, and he lived in another town, so he drove to me. We talked for a bit, and at random times, he would just start crying and telling me about how great his ex-girlfriend was, and also how he mistreated her. Red flag number one. I really tried to comfort him, but he was inconsolable. We eventually went to an empty parking lot, and he started crying again. Punching a steering wheel, loud crying, etc. Red flag number two. At another time, when he was crying, I asked if he was okay, and he shifted really quickly, and then told me, I'm fine. Us psychopaths can change our emotions quickly. Red flag number three. I thought nothing of it though, and I just took it as a joke. Sometime in October, we started dating once again, but we both lived in separate towns, so it was long distance. Throughout the relationship, almost daily he would call me crying to me about his ex-girlfriend and how much he missed her, and asking me what he should do to get her to talk to him again. I had comforted him each time and I told him that he wasn't a terrible person and that she probably still cares about him. During these moments, sometimes he would punch things which led to him bleeding, screaming, and throwing stuff. Once again, I ignored the red flags thinking he would change. I had really tried many times to get him some help, but he was reluctant. He would always threaten to kill himself in many different ways and I would talk him out of it each time. I didn't know his address but I would contact the suicide hotline for advice. Sometime later that month, we went on a second date, and we decided to go to his house, which was about three hours away. While I was in the shower, he had called me multiple times, and I called him back when I got out. Sorry, I was in the shower. Is everything okay? I don't care. You pick up your fucking phone when we're making plans, especially this one. I was taken aback and it made me really upset, but I felt kind of bad for not picking up and I decided to just hang out with him. His house was really messy to say the least. He had old lasagna in his bathroom, dog and cat shit all over the place, and he also had blood on his pillow from when he punched the glass. I was horrified. Our relationship only went downhill from there. At one point, he missed his ex-girlfriend so much he decided to drive in front of her house to see if she was still there. He called me in tears about this, and I told him that she just might not have been home and that she was probably at work or school. Anytime that I would stand up for myself or try and speak out, he would always yell at me. And when I tried de-escalating the situation, he would get more and more angry. And if I hung up, he would call me back multiple times. If I did one small thing that bothered him, he would scrutinize me for it. He would also constantly compare me to his ex-girlfriend, then deny it any time I mentioned it. He would say things like, I really wish I was talking to her. She could talk about really deep things. Randomly during the conversation, any chance he had, he would constantly remind me that she was his soulmate and that she was the one he wanted to be with in the end. I broke up with him shortly after for so many reasons and I really regretted it at the time and I begged him to take me back. In hindsight, I'm very glad that I did. We continued to be friends and he would go on and on about the same things. And I started sticking up for myself more. And he would send me audio messages on Snapchat yelling at me. Anytime I tried to console him or tried to help him, 
he would still yell at me. I tried cutting him off multiple times, but he would just draw me back in, saying things like, You're the only thing that's keeping me going. You really need to work on your timing. So I stayed. What I thought would be the final straw happened during an argument we had. I was talking about how I feel about the way he treats me, and he would say back, I don't think I treat you as badly as you think. At some point I started crying, and in response, he actually said that I was manipulating him by crying, and that I can't use my lady tears to get to him. Another time I said, You're letting your anger do the talking, and I'm letting my sadness do the talking, and we really shouldn't do that. And in response, he actually said back, You know what? Fuck you. I love you, but fuck you. And he never apologized. Other times he would randomly stop talking on the phone and then hang up and get angry because I said something that upset him. Yet, he would never even tell me what it was. And very recently, he started shifting the narrative that his ex-girlfriend was abusive. Ironic that he would say this after she told him there was no chance of them ever getting back together. I then cut him off shortly after when he told me he wasn't in the mood for any of my bullshit and I blocked him. There's honestly so much more to the story but this is just the gist of it. If you're wondering why I didn't leave him sooner, he would always apologize and say that he bought me something just to keep me there. I was also very, very afraid of him, and I still am, especially since he was involved in gangs at one point in time, and he's done some really shady stuff that he never told me about. Anyways, to end this story, to my ex-boyfriend, I really hope you get the help that you greatly need. You have the chance to change your life around. It's not too late. But please, stay far, far the hell away from me. Hi everyone. So, this story might not be as scary as most, but it was a very creepy experience for me. This happened in mid-2020. I'm a female, and I was 22 years old at the time. I met up with a 30-something year old guy that I'd matched with on Bundle. I'll call him B. The day went well and he ended up coming back to my place. Something that I highly regret. Now, it didn't really take long for the red flags to show. I agreed to be friends with benefits with him, as he hadn't been intimate with anyone for about two years supposedly. But he didn't quite get the concept. I should also mention that all the previous friends with benefits relationships I've had would always involve very little texting. But B would be constantly texting and trying to call me, even while drunk and crying. He had a young daughter at the time, and he was saying that he wouldn't introduce her to any woman unless things started getting serious, which I admired and respected. But a few days after our first meetup, he asked if I would drive with him to Sydney to drop his daughter off to her mom. Now, I live in Canberra, Australia, so it's around a three to four hour drive, and I was very uncomfortable with that as I had really only known him for a few days, and I wasn't really committed to meeting the daughter. He kept saying things like, I'll have a whole week without her, so I can stay with you, and I can make breakfast every morning. Considering that I also had a housemate, who was very uncomfortable around him right from the start, I also hated the idea. I told him a week was a bit too much, which he was disappointed about, but understood. Now it gets to the more creepy part, he kept sending me messages like, how about you teach me how to be friends with benefits? And asking me for all sorts of advice on dating. The next day, he calls me distressed because his daughter was acting up. But when I asked him why, he explained that he showed her a photo from my Bumble account and that she wanted to meet the girl with the really pretty blue hair. But when he told her that she couldn't, she started having a tantrum and crying. He also gave me warnings about how his ex knew about me and was asking him questions like what I look like, where I live, what was my address, etc. I got really bad anxiety over that, but then he said, Oh, don't worry. I didn't tell her anything but your name. I don't want her to try and find you and beat you with a hammer. Yeah, so after that, I decided to cut him off, which made him upset, and he would try to call me constantly because I wasn't answering the next day. After he dropped his daughter off to daycare, he had then messaged me, asking, Are you mad at me? Can we please talk? 
I saw you walking to the shops. I'll meet you there so we can talk. Unfortunately for me, he was already there by the time I got inside. He cornered me, and he wouldn't let me walk away until I started a full-blown panic attack, and people were staring at that point. He then proceeded to tell me that he was in love with me. Major red flag, as it had only been like a week since we met, and all that shit happened in such a short time. I told him I'm done, and he let me leave. A few days later, he messages me again and again until I block him. Thankfully, he never tried to come to my house after that. A few months later, I get a message request from his ex, asking me all sorts of inappropriate sexual questions about him, and also calling him names, which at first was kind of funny, but then turned very creepy. I then unblocked B to ask if it was his ex, and why the hell she was messaging me all of a sudden. He confirmed it was in fact her, and he asked what kind of stuff she was saying. My friend and I still think B was messaging me as his ex, because some of the messages just weren't right. I'm sorry if my story is a bit all over the place. It's kind of hard to explain it, but to everyone out there, please be careful with who you meet up with from dating apps. Hi, my name is Sasha. I'm 22 years old and this scary event happened to me about a week ago. So after I got done with my toxic ex-boyfriend Isaac, I had tried to get into a new relationship on Tinder and I came across this guy that was really good looking and he looked like my type. So I texted him. The man replied back, returning my compliments. He said that he was really glad that he came across me and he texted me his name. His name was Colin. I texted him back asking if he wanted to swing by my house and meet up. He texted me back saying sure, and he asked for my address. And I know it's going to sound really stupid, but I was really caught up in the moment, so I did in fact give him my address. He texted me back saying he was on his way. After Colin sent that, I had started getting ready, because, you know, I wanted to look good for this guy. About an hour later, I got a text from Colin, and the text said that he was here. I texted him back saying good and to just come to my door and I'll let you in. He then said okay and I went downstairs to open the door. I saw Colin but my heart then dropped when I saw right behind Colin was my ex-boyfriend Isaac. It was a setup. The whole time Colin was Isaac's friend and I didn't even know that. As you can imagine I was beyond pissed. I then said to Colin and Isaac to get the hell off my property immediately. Right as I was about to shut the door on their faces, Colin had blocked the door from closing with his foot and he barged through the door, with Isaac following right behind him. I yelled at them saying fuck them, then tried to run out of my house. But Isaac grabbed me, then saying, Where do you think you're going? Get the hell off of me, you son of a bitch! I said. And after I said that, Isaac said to Colin, Hey, why don't you tie her up and tape her little mouth shut? I was trying to get away, but Isaac had a really strong grip on me. I then saw Colin coming up towards me with the tape, and he bound me. And right when I was about to say fuck you to him, Colin taped my mouth shut, with Isaac laughing and then saying, Yeah, I really miss that little potty mouth of yours. And after Colin bound and gagged me, things took a major turn for the worst. Isaac laid me on the ground and pulled my pants down, with him then saying, Ooh, what sexy panties you have. I always loved it when you wore that pair of panties. They were my favorite. Then all of a sudden, I heard his pants zipper then unzipping. I started crying, and I thought I was going to die, until I then heard police sirens. Isaac and Colin fled the scene and opened my back door, jumping over my fence. The police barged through my front door and got the tape off my arms, legs, and mouth. I told the police that the men ran through the back door and jumped my fence. My neighbor came up to me and she told me that she heard all the commotion going on in my house and that's when she called the police. She then wrapped her arms all around me, hugging me, and telling me that she hopes I'm okay. I thanked her for calling the police and looking out for me. Not too long after that, the police caught up with Isaac and Colin and then arrested them. A lot happened after that that I don't really want to go into, and I ended up totally moving away from my house because I was really afraid they would come back. So yeah, 
wherever Isaac and Colin are now. I really hope they're suffering, and if they're not dead already, I really hope it happens soon. Hi everyone, I want to take a brief break from the stories to talk about today's sponsor, StoryWorth. You know, sometimes you really think you know someone, then one day you're chatting and you hear a story about them, and it really makes you wonder, how many other stories do I not know about this person? Well, that's why I got StoryWorth for my own family. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones connect through sharing stories and memories and also preserves them for years to come. Every week, StoryWorth will email one of your relatives a thought-provoking question of your choice from a vast pool of options. Each unique prompt asks questions like you've never thought of, like, what's some of the best advice your mother gave you? Or, if you were to do it all over, what would you do differently? One of my favorites was when they asked one of my relatives if they had any regrets in life. I've also really enjoyed reading all those answers to those questions. I've discovered so many stories and memories that I've never heard about and learned a lot of new things about stories I thought that I really knew. After one year, StoryWorth compiles all those questions and stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that the whole family can share for generations. I can't imagine what it's going to be like 20 years from now just looking at this book and reliving all these stories, and I think it's something really amazing for families everywhere. Today's Mother's Day. Why don't you give all the moms in your life a meaningful gift you'll both cherish for years? Story worth. Right now, for a limited time, you'll save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash cannibal. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash cannibal to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash cannibal. This happened on September of last year. Me and my boyfriend of two years had just broken up, so I joined Tinder to keep my mind off of things. Well, I decided to go on a date with this guy. This was my first Tinder date, but we had been texting and he seemed really nice. He picked me up and he took me bowling. I have really bad social anxiety, so I don't really enjoy it that much, but it's still nice. After that, he invited me over to his place. I agreed because it sounded a lot better to me than being in a public place. His place was definitely not in a good area, and it kind of creeped me out, but I just ignored it because I don't live in the best neighborhood either. We went inside, and we laid on his bed. We started talking, and we watched a scary movie. He had then started talking about how he couldn't feel certain emotions that other people feel, like empathy or guilt. I didn't really know what to say or do, so I just stayed quiet. He then slowly ran his finger through the top of my chest to the bottom of my stomach, and then said, Do you ever think about what the human body looks like on the inside? I was so scared. I didn't know what to do, so I just laughed. He went to go use the bathroom, and I texted my friend telling him to call me and say it was an emergency. He came back, and my friend then called me shortly after. I said that I had to go, and I asked him to take me home. He said yes, but he had started making excuses like, I can't find my keys, and my car is really low on gas. It kind of took a while of me telling him that I really have to go before he eventually took me home. Even in the car though, he was taking forever just to pick a song, or even to just start the car. He drove me home and he asked if I had a good time. I said yes, and he replied back with, you know... I can always tell when people lie to me. I kind of just smiled and said, but I'm not, and got out. He watched me walk up my stairs, then left. I never heard back from him again after that, but I really, really hope no one else ever has to go through what I had to. It was really scary as hell. This is my first time really writing out what truly happened to me in 2020, and I know I'll probably get a lot of backlash for it, but I'll try to keep it short. I had just gotten out of a four-year relationship, and I was looking for something new, and I guess different. The first thing I did was download Tinder and start swiping, as any 23-year-old living on her own would do. 
One day I matched with a guy, let's call him KC. Now, KC was the complete opposite of what my previous ex was. He had tattoos all over his body, was muscular, impulsive, etc. Which is what first really attracted me to him. And I thought he was the coolest and hottest person I ever met. It was about a month into hanging out with him when I really wanted to be in a relationship with him because of all the things he did for me and all the sweet words he would shower me with. So by then, he had really wrapped me around his finger. However, he had told me that he had previously been in prison for nine years for theft, drugs, fighting, etc. Any red flags this man threw at me, I caught them and threw them right out the window. My 23-year-old mind didn't even care if he killed someone because I was so determined to be with him for reasons that I honestly can't even explain. My mindset was, oh, I can save him and I can help him get his life back on track. However, the complete opposite happened and my own life became completely derailed. I was aware of his drug addiction and I was really trying to help him come off of it, but I had no idea what was in store for me. All of a sudden, I remember being invited to his friend's house, which was actually a trap house and I was sitting on a couch watching him literally smoke meth. This was the first time that I ever really witnessed someone do, I guess, a hardcore drug. After that night, out of nowhere, he said, Stop fucking judging me. I can see it in your fucking eyes. And I looked at him like he was crazy, and I didn't say a word. Then he proceeds to say, You don't know what addiction's like. You shouldn't judge me and act like you're so much better than me. And I told him I didn't know what the fuck he was talking about because I didn't say a single thing to him. He would say things like this to me daily and tell me things like, I'm going through shit too. And it isn't always just about you. Things that would make me feel even more bad about the position he was in. However, all that came to a stop when one day I had allowed him to drive my car. I had no idea that he was high because I just picked him up right from a job that I helped him get. Next thing I know, we're flying down the highway, doing a 70 and a 45. Then all of a sudden, we hit a car that was about to turn out in front of us, and then we hit a cement bridge pole. I just remember the air being knocked out of me, and there was so much smoke. I then looked down, and half the fucking engine was literally on my lap. I looked at Casey, and he was tripping balls, so I just climbed out of the car. The paramedics and cops arrived pretty quickly, and I was being examined by them. All of a sudden, I heard one of the bystanders then say, Where did the driver go? And I was like, What the fuck do you mean, where did he go? Everyone then stopped to look around, and Casey was gone. He literally fled the scene. He ripped my car in half and just left me there. Fortunately for me, I didn't break any bones or have any serious injuries, other than a concussion and my entire body looking like a purple smoothie. A couple of weeks later, I learned from the police that Casey actually had many warrants and he didn't even have a driver's license. I can honestly say that that was the worst day of my life. I've never felt so stupid. I guess what others can get from this is that you should always listen to red flags and really pay attention to the signs of narcissistic behavior. Casey, if you happen to hear this and you'll know who you are, you really better hope that we never meet again.